What is up people, Fire here from AwesomeDudes.com and before you start with this video, just quickly, I wanted to tell you that you can go on my website here, AwesomeDudes.com and then you can go under download free assets and there you can download free assets. Now these are commercial free assets, they are not assets for this tutorial. The assets for this tutorial, this dark cave, you can find, link is in the description below so you can get them from that link. But these are other commercial free assets that you can use to develop your own games and you have 3D assets, 2D assets, backgrounds and whatnot and I keep adding new and new stuff. So you should definitely check this out and yeah, enjoy the video. In the previous video, we created animations for our skeleton. So what we are going to do is we are going to make our skeleton walk in this video. So we are going to go into scripts and we so far have player scripts. I'm going to right click and here I am going to create skeleton scripts. And inside of it, I am going to create a script that I am going to call skeleton walk. Now, before we attach this script to our skeleton, I'm going to select him in the hierarchy and we are gonna add a box collider on him so box collider 2d and let me just zoom in a little bit so that i can see where the box collider is so i am gonna change it a little bit so the size for the box collider is gonna be something like this okay and on the y it can be like this it's gonna be enough i think this is gonna be the size of the colliders, you can see these green lines, so you can copy the values here. It's 1.14 for the X, 3.3 for the Y, and I'm just gonna copy the component by clicking on the gear, and we already did that. So I'm gonna click on the gear again. Since I have copied the component, I'm gonna pass component. I am gonna click on pass component as new, and here it is. Now we have two colliders. One is gonna be a trigger, and the other one is not gonna be a trigger. And if you are wondering why we are setting one of these to be a trigger and the other not, well, take a look at the player, for example. The player has also two colliders. One is a trigger, another one is not a trigger. But notice what is going to happen if I simply uncheck the checkbox for the collider that is not a trigger. Notice what's going to happen when we run the game. The player is going to fall down. Why is that? Well, a trigger or a collider that's a trigger, it can pass through other colliders. He passes through, he does not, they do not collide and then simply like bounce off each other or they negate each other, not allowing one to pass through another, no. A collider that is a trigger will pass through other colliders. That's why we need two colliders, one to be a solid body so that we can stand on it and the other to be well, a body for collision detection. So now we also need to add a rigid body on our skeleton. So rigid body and we are good to go. Now we can attach the skeleton walk script on the skeleton and I can double tap on it in order to open it. And let me just tag the class right here. So I'm simply gonna type here class. I am gonna run the, or excuse me, just simply hold enter to give a little bit space so that we can see what we are typing and we are good to go. So for our skeleton walk, we need two variables. One is gonna be a private float speed, which is equal to 3f. And another one is gonna be a public boolean. So public bool walk left. So this one is going to determine if our skeleton is going to walk left or if he is going to walk right. And now we are going to create a coroutine. And if you're not sure what a coroutine is, because we did not cover them, a coroutine is a function that is going to delay the execution of its task. And we create it like this. We simply type I enumerate. So I enumerator. And we name the function. So I'm going to name this one change direction. And inside of this function, first we are going to yield and return three seconds. So I'm going to say yield, return new, wait for seconds. So wait for seconds and we are going to wait three seconds. What does this mean? Well, as I said, the coroutine, which is this function, which is denoted by typing I enumerator, this function will 
delay the execution and this is that delay time so we are going to delay three seconds the number that we specify here is in seconds so wait for seconds we say three seconds after we wait for three seconds so this here is going to wait three seconds and after that we are going to execute the code so what i'm going to do here is going to say walk left is equal to exclamation mark walk left and you're like oh slow it down teacher what is going on i'm not sure okay okay well, what is going on here is that we are setting the boolean to be equal to, well, walk left, but we have this exclamation mark here. What does this mean? The exclamation mark is gonna make everything what's after it the opposite. So let's say that we set at the moment that our walk left is gonna be false. So when we call this function, it is going to wait three seconds, then it's going to reset the walk left variable to be the opposite of the walk left. So what's the opposite of false? It's going to be true and it's going to set it to be true. So next time we call this function again, it's going to wait three seconds. And now this is true, but it's going to reset it to the false of its own value. That means that it is going to be well, it's going to set it again to false, from true to false, because what's opposite of true? False. And what's opposite of false? True. So on and so forth. Every time we call this function, it's simply going to reset this value to the opposite of its own value. So this is what we are doing. And how, how do we call a coroutine? Well, a coroutine is not called like a regular function. We simply cannot go here and call change direction. This will not work. Instead, we need to type here start coroutine and inside of it, as an argument, we need to pass the name of our function, which is a coroutine. And this is going to start the coroutine. We are going to do that also here in the beginning. So in the start function, and we are going to create here above our coroutine, a function that I'm going to set to be private. So it's going to be private void walk. And here we are going to move our player. So we're going to type here vector three temp, which is our temporary position. We are going to get our current position by using transform that position. We are also going to get our local scale. So we're going to say here vector three dot temp scale. So it's equal to transform that local scale and temp scale is the name of our current variable. And now we're simply going to say if walk left, then we are going to move our skeleton to the left side. So we're going to say here temp.x minus equal to speed multiplied by time dot delta time. Now, what does this delta time mean? Well, delta time is built in function inside of Unity. And the delta time is that little short difference between every frame. So let's say we have 60 frames in a single second the time difference between each frame is going to be this delta time. And usually we use it into calculations like this. If we want to move something slowly, then we are going to multiply that by delta time. And now we are simply going to say temp dot X or excuse me, temp scale dot X is going to be equal to the negative by using mat F dot abs. And here we're going to say, transform dot local scale so local scale dot x or we can well simply use here temp scale so we can say temp scale dot x so it's going to be equal to the negative of the absolute value of temp scale dot x why is it like this well this is going to enable us to use it in a way that we can change this right here. If I go and select the skeleton and I go here in the inspector panel, notice that the scale is 0 0.65. Well, instead of us typing it here to be equal to negative 0 0.65 F, because maybe we are going to decide that in our game, we are going to change it from 0 0.65 to let's say 0 0.55. Well, for that, we can use the mat f absolute value. We know that the absolute value returns always a positive number. And we are putting the scale itself in the parameter. So it will return a positive number from the scale. And we are then going to simply make it a negative. Even though if I go now here in the scale and I change it to 55 instead of 65, then what is going to happen is that we don't need to go back in our code and here instead of 0 
we type 0.55. Y? Well, because this right here is going to get that value, turn it to a positive number, and then we can simply make it a negative by typing here. And now we're going to say else. If we are not moving left, that means that we are moving right. We're going to do all the same things that we did here, but instead of negative stuff, we are going to do it the positive way. So here I'm going to say plus equals to, and here I'm simply going to, well, use the absolute value of the temp scale X. And here we're saying plus equal to, excuse me, here we're saying plus equal to, which means that we are going to move our player to the right side. We are adding to his X axis, which will make him go to the right side because the positive side is the right side and the negative side is the left side. And now we simply need to call here transform that position is equal to temp and transform that local scale is equal to temp scale. And we are good to go. So simply now in the update function, we are going to call walk and we are good to go. So we can go in our Unity editor. I can select the skeleton. And if I zoom out, if I put the skeleton here, for example, I'm going to put it here. And let's say that we want our skeleton to start walking from the right side or first from the left. So I'm going to leave this walk left unchecked. And if I run the game, notice that he is going to walk. He is walking to the left side. Now he is going to come back here. Let's just let us just go near him so that we can see. Actually, we cannot see because we are not following him with the camera, but we can see like this here. Notice how he is walking. Notice how he is walking himself because we put that in our code and we are calling over and over the coroutine, which is changing his direction. And I explained because here in the code, we are simply returning three seconds and then we are changing the direction, which will make him walk here. And then we are recalling that same coroutine, which will again wait three seconds and change the direction. So every three seconds, we're going to change the direction. If you want him to make to move faster, you're going to increase the speed. And if you want him to move more then you're incre going to increase the weight for seconds. And now if I go back here and if I want him to move to the right side at the beginning, I'm simply going to check this walk left here in the inspector panel for the script. And if I run the application, notice he is now walking to the right side. So notice this, he is walking to the right side and going back and forth. So this was it for moving the skeleton. Next, we are gonna, well, move forward with our course. So I'm going to see you guys in the next video.